up everybody and welcome back to another video I'm so excited to be back doing a video like this one of my biggest videos ever was filmed basically just like this but I feel like I've worked way harder on this video and as you can see I also have the GoPro in here today I quit using the GoPro because it just doesn't give me that cinematic little touch that I love so much from the Sony a7 III but I thought it would be cool let's get a different angle switch it up just a little bit I want to talk to you guys today that are thinking about getting an F80 or an F82 M3 or M4 I want to talk to you guys because looking back at it there's there's things I would have done differently no doubt and I just want to talk about ownership and how much I still love this car I know there's been videos that I've made about maybe getting into different cars different platforms but once you take this thing out and you remember how good it is it's like why even go get another car payment why even restart the debt why even you know do any of that there's of course like a huge following and a huge fan base for these cars but I don't feel like they get the respect they deserve especially since the s58 came out the g80 and the g82 they're the newest thing they're the new kid on the block and you know how everybody goes crazy for the newest bmw m cars so to me that just means it's a perfect time to pick one of these cars up if that's what you're looking for i mean you can find pretty decently specced f80s in the mid 30s low 40s now which is this is a lot of car for that kind of money this is a lot of car for that kind of money man there's times where I could almost, you know, go get an individual spec, a comp, individual, 2018, you name it. You can go get those cars for like high 40s, low 50s. If it's really low mileage, more money than that. But it's a great time to pick up an F80 or an F82. I mean, the M4 market's even lower. So can't really, can't really beat this car for the money right now. I just want to talk about why you should watch this before you buy one though because I'm going to go over a few different things. I'm going to talk about the process of actually buying one and what you should be doing. If you're just now starting the process or if you're in the market and just kind of looking around, you should do these things. First off, if I had like a budget of 50k, if I was going to spend up to 50k, I would look for a 2018 spec M3. Uh, or an M4 I just don't like I wouldn't want to go back and buy one of these cars and buy one without the icon headlights ever again like I would never do that again now that I have the icon headlights in my car I'm like if I ever buy another F8X it will come with those headlights for one the OEM ones are so expensive so you don't really want to have to purchase them um, second hand or brand new or even the the replica ones are really expensive so I wouldn't want to do that again I would be looking for a 2018 model if you are in a lower budget range like 35 to 40 45 K if you look around good enough for these cars you can really find some pretty good deals on them you can find you know one owner clean title just you know a good color a good spec for an affordable price which is just something that is new to me because I had to buy a car that was I'm not gonna say in any perfect condition it had 60,000 miles on it uh, and it was pushing right at $50,000 and that was in 2022 when things were a little bit hectic whenever it came to the used car market so I did pay more for this car than I would have liked but at the time that's just what the market was at so now the market is so good um, you know people I, I see people comment on like M3 list posts about the prices on there some of those prices are higher than what you're seeing and I think that real enthusiast pages like that I think that they can kind of drive the market and control the market with what they ask but nonetheless these cars have definitely come down in price and if you're in the market for one 
it's probably pretty exciting. Now, if I was gonna buy another car again, the first thing that I would do whenever I found a car that I wanted is I would get a pre-purchase inspection. You should get a pre-purchase inspection on these cars. You do not want to get a car that someone's getting rid of because it has something going wrong with it that you are gonna have to fit the bill for. You do not want to do that. Uh, BMWs and performance cars, European cars, exotic cars. In this world, people trade around and they will get rid of something if it has a problem that they don't want to fix and they'll just trade and get a new car. So then some other person that might be just trying to get into the platform comes along and buys it. Then they have to fix some bullshit and they have a terrible experience and it puts a bad taste in their mouth for a certain brand and that's why you have people that think that these cars are unreliable because they buy what they can afford and they happen to buy pieces of junk. So I would do a pre-purchase inspection Another thing about these cars that I wish I would have known before I got into the platform, if you've never had any high-end performance car, one thing that you have to get used to is all the weird little noises and extra things that this car, like extra sounds and just weird things it does. I used to be so scared of this car all the time, like anytime it would clunk or they have a drive shaft clunk, and I'd had no clue about that, especially if you have a carbon drive shaft car. I had no clue about that and it scared the shit out of me whenever I first got this car. Like, you can hear that, right? It turns out that these cars, they make good power. So in order to make that power, they have a little bit of extra going on, as you could imagine. So there is no reason for you to worry if you hear some little clunks and tings and pings or whatever it is with these cars because they do that they're just raw they're very rough riding um, just you know they're performance cars that's what they do in order to give you the performance that you need you might have to deal with some different noises and little things that sound scary if you heard it on a Camry so a few maintenance things that you have to deal with with these cars I'm gonna go ahead and talk about just preventative maintenance these cars and, and a lot of modern BMWs are known to have plastic parts that fail that are designed to fail so you have to take it to BMW and get it fixed um, well on these cars I would say you're probably gonna want to do charge pipes pretty soon you just don't want to be you know on the road somewhere and have a charge pipe crack they're plastic they get warm they get cold they get warm they get cold uh, through use with the car and before you know it one of them pops and you know it's not that big of a deal it happens it's happened to me on two of my BMWs not this one but cracked charge pipes so the other thing and people will still argue about this and I don't know why because I've seen it firsthand uh, the charge cooler, the top mount charge cooler on these cars, they have plastic parts inside of them and they are prone to leaking. And what will happen is you'll leak coolant into your J-pipe, which it happens. It's not, you know, life or death. They're just awful, but you don't want to continue to let that happen. So what you need to do is you need to get an aftermarket one. The sad thing is, is that you're going to get the best performance out of the OEM BMW top mount charge cooler but they break so get a metal one and you'll never have to worry about it again one of the other things that is a must-have on these cars especially if you're gonna lower the car I would get the Turner Motorsport skid plate for the bottom of the car it covers your oil cooler it sits adjacent to the ground and if your car is lowered it literally sits like this high off the ground it's insane if you hit debris in the road and you crack that oil cooler and the oil leaks out while your car is running, you will probably have to get a new motor and you do not want to do that. Nobody does. So just go ahead and spend the $450 that it costs to get the skid plate and you'll be good to go. You'll never have to worry about that again. 
And then on to the next topic, let's talk about a controversial one as well. Let's talk about the crank hub. I've talked about the crank hub in quite a few videos of mine. The crank hub is done on this car. I got it done, you know, I didn't get it done immediately. That was the plan, but at the time shops were so backed up that I actually had to wait uh, on a list to get my car in to do the crank hub. Here on the East Coast, a crank hub is gonna cost you about four grand to get done. And it's, to me, it's worth it. It's worth it for me to know that I'm not gonna ever have that issue. I don't wanna deal with that issue. It's not a myth. There are people that have had crank hub failure and some of them have even commented on my videos. So I know that they're out there. I know that it happens. People say it's just driving characteristics, maybe. I don't know. I just know that I'm not gonna take a chance. And if you're gonna spend forty-five, fifty thousand dollars on a car, I mean budget that for whenever you buy the car. It's something that you don't want to mess with. I'm telling you, if you take a chance on that and you destroy your motor, that would just be honestly tragic. So I did my crank hub. If you've had an M3 or an M4 for a long time and you didn't do the crank hub, and you've had it tuned and down pipes and stage two and E85 and all that, you know, and you've been good. That's not uncommon. Like there's people out there like that. So I do see why people argue about this all the time. There's people that have never had that issue or never even worry about it. And then there's people that have low mileage stock cars that spin the hub. It happens. You can press the gas pedal all the way down to the floor and you'll feel like almost like there's a button down there that once you push it all the way to the floor you'll feel it it takes you from like i'm in fifth gear right now it probably put me in like second gear and it would just take off it's not healthy for a car and that's the reason why people actually have that happen to them um, i've actually never done it i've never done it in my car i've driven this car pretty hard i drove it hard before i got the crank up done but I've never done kick downs. I've never done like brake boosting or anti-lag on the car. I don't street race. I just think that there's things that you can obviously do to spin the crank hub. And there's so many people that probably do those things. I think that there are real cases of people spinning their crank hub and being screwed whenever they have to fit the bill for a new motor. So I was not going to have that happen to me. Now I'm enjoying my car worry free. People say that these cars are um, not as reliable as the B58 or the S58 and while that may be the case, I think once you do the things that I just went over, I think this car is pretty damn reliable. I've not really had any issues with this car as far as any of those. I think once you get the maintenance done, your preventative maintenance, if you take care of the car, I think it will take care of you. about some of the fun stuff now uh, this is a 2017 f80 m3 it's finished in yas marina blue which is my personal favorite and it's why i bought the car this car is an executive package carbon roof car pretty fairly specced it's pretty loaded at the time of buying this car really all i wanted was an m3 and i wanted yas marina blue so Finding out later that I have certain options on this car that I wasn't even looking for made me happy. And it's just overall a beautiful looking car. So once you get the F80 M3 or the F82 M4 and you start wanting to do modifications, prepare yourself because it 
kind of becomes an obsession, like getting the, the modifications and, and making the car your own. But one of the most must-have modifications I think that these cars need, I think that these cars like have to be lowered. Like I would not own one of these cars and not lower it. Whenever I first got the car, I did not care at all about lowering it. I was just happy to have the car. But then you get around all the other F80s and all the other BMWs and you see them lowered and you're like, wow, that looks so sweet. Like the OEM wheels and OEM tire specs, they just don't do it for the car. They just, they look sunk in. They don't fit the car right. So lowering it helps that out a lot. And then after you lower the car, I would definitely do spacers if you're gonna stay on an OEM wheel do bigger tires um, my car is currently on EMD springs which I have no complaints about the EMD springs really make the car look very low I mean this car is low and the best part about them is they don't really feel any different than the OEM springs did so you don't really lose any comfortability and it looks so much better once you lower the car I mean the front wheel gap is so bad on these cars it's just it's so gross like I hate it so after I lowered the car I loved it that much more as far as wheels and tires I'm currently on HRE flow form 04 wheels which they're finished in silver I love the way that they look they are 20 inches which I didn't want to go with a 20 I wanted to go with a 19 but they were on back order at the time so I settled for 20s and while they do look amazing they actually do hinder the performance just a little bit it's very obvious you can feel it whenever you're driving the car through corners pretty hard they're 20 by 10 in the front and 20 by 11 and a half in the rear so they're very wide and i'm on a 265 30 in the front and a 295 30 in the rear and my fitment is i would say it's pretty much perfect that's me ranking my own fitment but i think that the fitment looks great uh, I get a lot of compliments on the fitment, so pretty much what I think is, is like must-have modifications is making the car look proper and look how it should look. Sitting low, they're very wide, they're very pit bullish, they look mean, so whenever you lower it, it just makes it look that much meaner, and I, I'm really in love with it. I mean, a lot of people, they get these cars, they don't do anything but put springs and spacers on the car, and it automatically makes it look perfect. It's just like that chef's kiss thing that you can do to the car to really just make it look how it should have looked from factory a little bit more, in my opinion. Lowering springs, spacers on a stock car, and you could leave it at that. I mean, you don't have to do too much more to these cars. Of course, there's tons and tons of carbon bits that you can get for the cars. My car pretty much has everything. I've got the V-style carbon front splitter, which I love. I've got the PSM side skirts and carbon, which I love. I have the PSM four-piece rear diffuser in the rear, which it hides the muffler and it just looks super aggressive, which is what I was going for on this car. Look, guys, I know that some people don't like it or think it's not tasteful to do all this stuff, and that's completely fine. That's why we all have our own opinions on our cars and what we like to do to them. I like mine to look aggressive, like the wing. People say it looks like a Forza wing. That's almost a compliment to me because I wanted my car to look like something that I built in Forza, and it looks damn near identical to the cars I built in Forza. So this car is my toy. It's my it's not my daily driver. I drive this car for fun. I want it to look wild. I want it to sound wild. I just want it to be something that I feel a lot of fun whenever I'm driving it. And that's how I feel whenever I drive this car. So I have the aggressive carbon bits everywhere. I love it. I get a lot of compliments and I also get a lot of hate comments on some of the choices I've chosen for my modifications, which is fine. Uh, you know, sometimes you do things and it becomes polarizing and you just don't even realize it's going to all I was doing is letting that that little bit of uh, the kid me kind of come out and flex on the car just a little bit I know the grown-up thing to do is not to put a big wing on your car but the child Trevor that put the wing on the car absolutely loves it and 
you know, it's just fun. It's just fun to have a big wing on the back of the car. I love it whenever I see it in the rear view mirror. I love the way it looks from the front. It's just a wild look. The wing is here to stay for at least right now. I do have another trunk that's already painted and ready to be put on whenever. But I just can't see myself taking it off. Like, I think about it sometimes. Should I ditch the wing, put the other trunk on for a while, see if I like it? But then I get out and I look at the car with the wing on it, and I just absolutely love it. So we're going to leave it for right now. So this car I have tuned on a Stage 1 93 tune from Boot Mode. For you people that are looking to get into this platform and you're wondering, I would say drive the car stock for at least a month and, and really appreciate the power that it has and learn the power. It is a twin turbocharged car, so the power curves and the torque can be a little bit difficult for someone who hasn't had a car with this kind of power. So I think you should get used to it with the power it comes with, and then that way you'll be able to appreciate the tune even more. So. I do get a lot of questions about what exhaust I have on this car. Nothing spectacular. I have an active auto work equal length mid pipe with stock muffler and stock down pipes. The car sounds really good. Would I like more turbo spool out of the exhaust? Yeah, I know the down pipes will do that. But I've also heard a lot of cars with my same mid pipe and down pipes and it's just a little bit too loud for my liking it's more about sounding good than it is sounding loud so i do want to get down pipes eventually but i'm gonna to have to do a single mid pipe i think because that's probably the way to go uh for me as of right now i love the way that this car sounds and i'm gonna keep it that way for a little while probably top three mods on this car is my RK Titanium front mount intakes. They sound amazing. You don't have to get an expensive brand. I went with RK Titanium because I wanted to make sure that the fitment was good being that it's front mount intakes. And I just love the way that the titanium looks. I kind of picked out a color of titanium. I picked out a certain burn that matches up with Yas Marina Blue pretty well. It tied into my color scheme pretty well and I love my front mount intakes. Just the sound that they make, you're pretty much going to get that sound with any front mount intakes. I guess just the intakes being right behind the front grille just makes it all that much louder than being under the hood. And I quite enjoy it. I get a lot of questions about like water getting into them. And you know, I wash this car full blast with pressure washer and I spray right there. I've driven through some pretty harsh rain and I've had no issues. So that's not really a concern of mine and I don't think it should be you know I, I guess it just seems kind of obvious to ask that question considering that the front mount like the intake filters are like right there so I get it but no that's not a concern I haven't had that issue out of my front mount intakes they sound amazing and I love them it just makes the car sound so much cooler like you can hear them from forever away whenever you're downshifting and you're doing a pull like I like to set my camera up pretty far away from my car and actually drive towards it and just the sounds that it that they make are just really really cool and I do love the front mount intakes so the F80 M3 was my dream car I would have taken an F80 or an F82 for a while there I was stuck on an F82 because I do love the coupe but one thing about the F80 M3 that stands out to me is the wide hips in the rear they just look so good, especially from the front. Like I said, a very pit bullish stance. It just looks really mean. Now, don't get me wrong. The M4 is really wide, too. They're the same width in the rear, but the M4 is more of a gradual bulge. And on this car, since there is a rear door, it just, right after the rear door, it sticks out. Uh, it really looks like the car has a wide body kit, if you don't know what you're looking at. I love that. It gives it that more traditional bubbly look that we love from BMW so much, like on the 1M and the E46 M3. The, the hips, they're just very, very aggressive, and I, I really love them. It's that true BMW M look, just a real wide rear. And I, I, I can't say that the M4 doesn't look that way, but something about the M3, it just looks like it's 
wider and I do like that and I get it whenever you're picking a sports car a coupe seems more of a sports car than a sedan but don't get me wrong this car looks aggressive enough everyone knows what it is everyone knows that it's something special rolling down the road you're either looking for a great car to have fun with with your friends on the weekend go to shows go on cruises go on drives or this is your dream car like me this was my dream car and it does not disappoint at all I mean they're just cars at the end of the day but this car does not disappoint I love this car so much I've had so much fun with this car and I've spent a ton of money on it but I think it's all worth it it's done a lot about if you're in the market for an m3 or an m4 i'm gonna always say do it it's a ton of fun i will catch you guys in the next video peace